Now, investing and growing our own wealth is at the heart of much of the world's financial system, of course, but protections are also needed to help keep those investors safe. The European Union has just announced rules on crypto designed to do just that. They've not come into effect yet, but they could have far-reaching implications for the sector. So let's talk about them in detail with Toby Norfolk Thompson, who's Chief Investment Officer at Matrix Port. Toby, but listen, the finer details of uh, the EU's markets in crypto assets, what's come to be known as MICA regulations, seem now to be finalised. Can you give us an idea of what exactly your assessment is of them and what the likely impact will be on crypto? You know, I think overall it's, it's, it's positive development for global and for European markets. Um, it could provide uh, a lot of the, a lot of much needed clarity. I think some of the key key elements of the MICA rules are that NFTs will be largely excluded. You know, I think on the one hand it introduces more clarity for market participants in Europe. On the other hand, it undoubtedly will increase costs and complexity. And an interesting development is the requirement for all tokens that will be listed to publish a substantial white paper outlining, uh, you know, outlining essentially how they will operate. Now, on the surface of it, that sounds very sensible, but there's been quite a lot of interesting analysis around the, the liability, the civil liability legal advice, cost, and so on and so forth, that, that will incur. So I think time will tell, you know, whether that discourages people from um, engaging in European markets. I think, uh, you know, undoubtedly, it will improve the anti-money laundering situation and the things like the implementation of the travel rule, the zero threshold in Europe, um, is a very positive development, which will enable states, in, you know, uh, European states to coordinate uh, better on, on, you know, on asset recovery and um, anti-money laundering issues. And I think that's very important for the industry because we all know in the industry that actually digital assets by their nature are hugely traceable and actually will should beckon in an era making it much harder for criminals to order money using them. So therefore that's something that, you know, those of us who've been in the industry for a number of time are very keen to see uh, that really that really follow through. Toby, how big a deal could this be for institutions as well across Europe? So there's no doubt that the clarity that MICA provides will uh, you know allow um, that the uh, you know more flows into crypto from you know from continental Europe and coordination across across European countries. Um, I think that fundamentally um, the institutional capital in investment banks and asset managers is awaiting um, clear liquidity and capital rules before um, it's able to wholesale move into digital assets. And those institutions are typically engaged with digital markets via investment in other institutions, um, uh, you know, often at an equity level. And really, I think the race is on for uh, the first jurisdiction to lay down those clear and commercially friendly rules. All right, let's talk in more detail about stable coins, Toby. Uh, it had looked like they were ignored in the 2020 draft of this legislation, but it now seems like they're included. Where does MICA now ultimately leave stable coins? Yeah, as you say, it's very clear that the, the legislation now includes uh, all stable coins, including algorithmic stable coins, and there's a, a 200 million euro daily um, threshold cap, um, which essentially makes it difficult to use them for payments. Um, I think it's it's hard to see um, European stable coins developing within that environment, and I think. Europe is not setting itself up for stable coins to be a large part of the mix in terms of payment technology going forward, which personally I, I think is a mistake. And I want to talk to you uh, quickly as well about the UK's move ahead with new legislation on economic crime and corporate transparency. Is this going to make it easier for law enforcement agencies to deal with crypto assets, especially those uh, that they may be suspected of uh, being used in criminal activity? And how does that fit into what's happening in Europe? The various pieces of legislation that are coming out of the UK are undoubtedly uh, making it easier for law enforcement agencies to, um, you know, to, to freeze crypto assets and, and to track them. Uh, I, I certainly view the Europe, uh, Europe and the UK separately. I think in, in Europe, um, I would say MICA is, is quite, a, a, quite a mix of positive and negative signals to the industry. I think in, in the UK, um, there's definitely a recognition of stable coins being a very large part of the payment, the mix of payments uh, that are coming, and the Treasury and Bank of England have both made that very clear in their consultation papers this year. I think there's a, a lively debate in the UK about the role of central bank digital currency, with some people calling it calling for it to be extremely small and wholesale indeed, with the vast majority of payments being based upon private stable coins. So um, broadly, I, I, my view is I think the, the 
uh, the UK is positioning themselves um, to be more industry friendly than my care at the moment. All right, thanks so much for that, Toby. That was Toby Norfolk Thompson from Matrix Port talking to us.